In this part, we're done with color correction and adjustments. We are looking to add in a certain something to our shots. We're gonna be using some of the lighting effects just to give everything a little bit of magic. In the last moving vehicle shot, I really wanted a slightly more striking look than what we ended up with. The clouds were okay. With a little manipulation, they had enough variation and detail, but uh, on the day, we didn't get those awesome streaks of light cutting through sort of god rays that uh, I dreamed of having in that shot. So for a final touch, I had a little bit of fun, added in node with the light rays effect. And this can very easily go overboard. I'm gonna take you through a little bit of what it looks like now, but um, if you're tasteful with it and you get the right balance, and the shot's believable, if you have enough light in there and enough uh, variation in the sky, it can actually give a really satisfying effect that just finishes everything off. If it was a completely gray sky, it would just feel bizarre and it wouldn't really work. So let's look at what's going on just here. I'm gonna play that clip. And you see if I'm bringing this in and out, it's very subtle. You probably wouldn't have even noticed it if I hadn't disabled it and enabled it. But you can see those rays of light just cutting through the clouds and those are being motivated by the slightly brighter areas as if the sun is kind of behind a bit and it's just sort of peeling through, cutting through the atmosphere. Now, on the right-hand side, I've already added this in, but I'm gonna take you through a little bit of uh, what's going on with it. You can, first of all, if we up the brightness, you'll be able to see those streaks a bit more. Obviously, you can go to insane levels with this. And then you can change the position so you can get the direction um, convincing for what you're doing. It can be going up, it can be going down. You can make it so that uh, it's kind of going sideways. Just position it where you want. So I kind of liked it like that because it was facing towards the back of the car. You can have a cavalcade of different things you can manipulate with this. So the length of those streaks, you can pull them right in, you can pull them right out so they go across the whole thing. I just wanted them sort of in the sky, not across the foreground because that probably wouldn't be realistic in this setting. You can soften them but that wasn't really what I was after. That's kind of more of a glow around the really bright areas when you do it like that. So I wanted more defined streaks. And then as we've seen, we can adjust the brightness. You could also adjust the color, but I don't think that we need to for this effect just here. And I'm just eking that in. So it is barely, barely there, but just adding something else to the sky because that patch of cloud that we see just here is a little bit gray. We pulled a bit of color back in, we got a bit of blue, we got a bit of pink, but that gray patch in the middle, this just helps to break it up a bit and give it that uh, texture that, not that I was dreaming of, but it gets a little bit closer to that dream shot. The foreground grass actually on this shot is really important. It, even though it's really just a blur at this point, we've done quite a lot of work to it. So we pulled it down uh, so it's not so bright. And we've also balanced it so that it's got that um, kind of memory color green that uh, you're gonna expect from it. It also helps to break up the shot. So you've got kind of greeniness, you've got the pinky blueiness at the top, and then you've got the white car in the middle separated by that kind of row of slightly orangey autumnal trees. So you're kind of layering everything up in a nice sandwich. Green is important because it's uh, one of those subconscious um, colors that people will recognize. And because we're filming at different times of day, it's something that we had to be particularly careful about when we come to do the grade because uh, the cloud is coming in, we're getting more or less direct sunlight, sometimes things are backlit, sometimes things are frontlit. So balancing out so that it's not all over the place is pretty important. Finally, the car in this shot has got a pop and up until the point that uh, I added some of these final effects, it didn't really do that. So I'm just gonna take you through and show you that just here. So we've got our grass corrections, which you can see, take it to a much greener green. It's not necessarily realistic, but it certainly feels more like grass than that does because we've dialed up the uh, white balance in order to, if we're looking at the raw settings just there, I've taken up to 11,347, which is absolutely crazy, but it gave me what I wanted in the sky, which was what I was worried about at that point. And then I've just manipulated the grass to sit where it's feeling a little bit more vibrant. Now, aside from the grass just there, we do have some other corrections that we have made. Looking at the car, it's a pretty subtle adjustment that I put in just there. But again, it is just uh, the same as we did on the model car, really. I have a power window set up just there. Zoom in on that a little bit. And you can see I put that around the car, feathered it off quite a lot. And then we've gone to the tracker panel, tracked that over the top of the car so that when it's moving through the shot, it's actually going to uh, 
track along with the car and having that in there, just click off that, means that the car is going to be just that little bit more prominent in frame. Helps to draw the viewer's attention. It's the focal point, it's what people have got to be uh, looking at, and it's important as all through the process, the filming, choosing camera angles, choosing lenses, we're trying to guide the audience's eyes to certain areas within the frames. And when we're continuing through into the color grade, we have to continue that work as well, guiding the audience's eyes in the edit so that when shots are placed next to each other, the audience can coherently look from one shot to the next and see what they need to see, see what you want them to see. And then when we do the color grade, you're drawing their eyes in again to the point with either color contrast, with adjustments to uh, the tone or balance of the scene, even with adjustments like we did to the grass and the sky just there, making sure that those fit within their idea of what grass and sky should look like is important because it helps to guide their eyes away from those areas, if you like, to the subject. Whereas if something really stood out is not looking quite right, then they might not look at the area that you want them to look at. And you can see with the sky just there, <clears throat> with the sky just there, it's pretty simple effect that I've done. We've just used a gradient, we pulled it down so we get a little bit more detail in the sky. So if we start with a completely blank canvas on this and reset everything on that grade, took all of the raw levels down and reset the white balance to 5600, the tint, exposure, just knocked everything off to where it would be. Obviously at the moment we're very gray but if I take it to just the video LUT, that's the kind of thing we're dealing with. That's what the shot is like before we interpret it, before we interpret the raw, before we interpret how we're gonna do the creative grade, adding any LUTs, adding any corrections, power windows, that kind of thing. It is that. So immediately, yeah, you could bring the exposure down on it, but as you bring the exposure down, you see it's kind of gray. Okay, you bring up the color temp a little bit to warm it up, but it's still not quite as vibrant. So you've got to really work that footage. It isn't necessarily gonna look like that straight out of camera, but that's the important part of um, understanding what you can do with it, understanding how the entire workflow works from the editing to the color grade, um, and obviously initially how you capture it, what your exposure is sitting at, how that can be interpreted, and what the limitations of the camera system and the codec are. So yeah, undo all of that and go back to our actual grade and everything looks a lot more vibrant. In the final part, we're having a very brief look at how we then used Fairlight to finish the audio for this project. <laughs> 